Hello, my name is Jeremy Chara and I'd like to welcome you to CCNA Security. What I'd like to do in this opening nugget of the entire series is to talk about the big picture of Cisco certification. I want to talk about, of course, CCNA security, how to get there, what, what it's going to take, that kind of thing. And then I want to turn the attention to the Cisco certification realm as a whole, what the benefits of getting certified are. It's, it's actually more beneficial than a Microsoft or Novell certification. I'll talk about that. And then I'd also like to talk about and just take a brief moment to walk through how to get the most from this series. Whether you've taken a CBT Nuggets series in the past or uh, this is the first time you've ever seen CBT Nuggets, I'd like to just walk you through what best practices as you go through this can you can you do to make sure you retain what you're hearing and you can apply this not only to a certification exam but to the real world and how you can just master Cisco technology at the time of this recording which is September of 2008 the CCNA security is the newest one of the newest certifications that Cisco has released it was actually released alongside the CCNA voice and the CCNA Wireless at the Cisco Live Convention out in Florida uh, in June 2008. Now, the idea behind these new CCNA specialties is to create high quality people, <laughs> meaning people that know a lot about Cisco in the realms of security, voice, and wireless without requiring them to give up their lives to go for a full professional level certification. See, Cisco has done a lot of studies, and they've watched the certification program that they've had running for years and years and years, and they found that a massive amount of people who wanted to get Cisco certified would get their CCNA and stop. Not because they didn't want to go on. You know, maybe they, maybe they did. Maybe they did want to go on. But looking at the CCNP or the CCSP or VP, you're looking at, four or five additional certification exams to get a professional level cert, uh, five in the case of CCSP. And if you I mean, just think about that in terms of sheer cost, uh, the cost on those exams is now 150 bucks. It used to be 125. They recently had to, you know, scandalous marketing. Uh, increased it up to 150 bucks. Uh, so just, just to get that, if you pass every exam the first time, you're looking at $750 plus a massive amount of time of studying and so on. And that is just to be specialized in security. So this new CCNA powerhouse mission, what I call it, of Cisco, is to give people enough knowledge to be really good at security, to be really good at voice with the CCNA voice, to be really good at wireless and really good at routing and switching with the original CCNA, um, and, and have a really good Cisco person without requiring them to know everything about a given technology like you do when you get into the professional and even the expert level certifications. And frankly, that's what a lot of businesses are looking for. A lot of companies, and I'm not going to say they're not going to hire a CCSP or a CCNP or, or, or a VP person, but typically the professional level people that have spent all the money and time getting those professional level certs, or even the expert level people, the CCIE people, are asking for such high salary demands and their knowledge is so specialized that companies are, are kind of like, well... You know, you'd be really good as a security auditor or a consultant or working in a company who specializes in nothing but Cisco, but man, we're, we're a school district or we're, a, you know, we're an enterprise company that, that you know, just wants somebody who knows a lot about a lot. And that's, that's the idea behind the CCNA powerhouse specializations to where somebody could go through, get all the different CCNA specialties, have a really good idea of what's going on. And I'll tell you what, this is probably the best thing about it. If they don't know the answer to something, they have a really good idea of where to look for it and where to find it. So the CCNA specialty concept is to make people that are very good at things without requiring them to go through all kinds of exams to get the professional level certs. I have much more I could say about those CCNA specializations, but I don't want to do it all on the first slide. I have many more slides to help out describe them. So now let me take a step back and look at the Cisco certification track in a more broad picture. I've, I've got to tell you, I love Cisco certifications. <laughs> I, I do. I, um, I actually originally got into the 
technology world in the realm of Novell and Novell certifications. And I uh, got my CNE in Netware 4. And when I did, I got this beautiful certificate in the mail from Novell that said, you are a CNE. You are authorized to use the CNE acronym on your business card and things like that. And now, may the force be with you. Go forward. Uh, I did the same thing for Microsoft. I got my MCSE in, in Windows NT4 and Windows 2000. And again, I got the beautiful certificate in the mail. And, and uh, they said, now go forth, MCSE, and, and uh, do great things. But with both of those, while the certificates did look great, it was still up to me to fully go find a job and find, uh, find things to do and, and uh, what to use my MCSE and CNE for. With Cisco, everything changed. With Cisco, of course, you still get the beautiful certificate in the mail, and now I think they even send you a pin, and uh, I don't know what all they send you, but you get, you get the standard certification benefits similar to Microsoft and Novell. But one big difference is Cisco actually incents companies to hire you, meaning companies, larger companies, that are wanting to achieve Cisco partnership to either resell Cisco equipment or buy Cisco equipment at a discounted rate have to fulfill what's known as job roles. And depending on the level of certification, like I think it, it starts off with, I don't know if they call it uh, Cisco Premier or Cisco Select or something like that, but it's kind of like a low-level certification a company can get, and they get a certain level of discount for that. And, and as they fill more job roles with Cisco certified people, they move higher and higher and uh, higher until they move up to a gold, I think gold is as high as it goes now, uh, status with Cisco where you get some massive discounts on the gear that they sell. So when you get a Cisco certification, not only you know do you have the certification going for you but companies are actually looking for you they're looking to fulfill those job roles with Cisco certified people and they know Cisco certified people know what they're doing now how do they do that let me get to this slide Cisco certification was revised in 2007 to create a more difficult CCNA if we were to rewind back to, oh, it would be around 2000 when I, when I got my first Cisco certification, I actually got, back in 2000, the entire CCNA and CCNP in one month. Five exams, one month. <laughs> now, did I know what I was doing? No. I just knew how to study for exams because I've, I've gone through all the Microsoft and Novell slide and you, you kind of get the feel of multiple choice questions and you can start thinking how the exam writer's thinking. And I passed those exams not really knowing what I was doing. I guess you could call me, I was, a paper CCNA and paper CCNP, which means I, I knew how to pass the exam, but I didn't really know how to do it. Well, through the years, it's now 2008, eight years later, Cisco has been revising and revising and revising, and their exams are now intensely difficult. There's actually a, a, a uh, I think it was in Network World or some magazine, they published uh, the different uh, uh, exams or, or the progress of Cisco exams, and they say pretty much a CCNA nowadays is equivalent to a CCNP in 2003. And a CCNP nowadays is equivalent to what a CCIE was in 2003. And I would, I would have to debate that one. But at the same time, I'll say that the exams have gotten much more difficult. The curve to get into the industry is much higher. And you, you just got to know a lot more. And the res exams have been revised to really be a you-must-know-what-you're-doing kind of exam instead of just study a book and you'll pass the test. The exams are very real world in the sense that they will have simulations, they'll have drag and drops. Just about every question, you'll get the feel for them 